Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So now let us work out some examples. Start with water. What, what do you have? Wait. Let me hear from the gentleman in the faraway benches. Yeah, tell me. Do you have a point of inversion? Do I have uh, an axis of symmetry, simple axis? Yes, you all agree? Where is it? Here. And it is a C2 axis. Okay. Any other axis? No. Achha. Now let us look for uh, planes. I think you are going to think that I am stupid if I even ask you if there is a vertical plane of, if, if there is a horizontal plane of symmetry, obviously there is not, so I will not ask that question. Do we have vertical plane of symmetry? Yes. Where are they? This is one, the molecular plane and this is one, perpendicular to the molecular plane, sigma of these. Go back. This is easy to understand. And now think of a plane that is perpendicular to the molecular plane. So, this is how I have drawn it. I do not know whether it is easy to see or difficult to see. It is a plane that is perpendicular to the plane of the paper or the projection or whatever it is. So, I call the first one sigma v and I call the second one sigma v dash. And here, even for this very simple molecule, I want to make a point. The point is that these two sigma v's that I have drawn, they are not equivalent to each other. Will you agree with me on that? So, I call them sigma v and sigma v dash. I do not call both of them sigma v's. They are not equivalent to each other. Why do I say they are not equivalent to each other? There are two ways of approaching that question. First of all, what happens when I apply sigma v? When I apply sigma v, what is it that happens to the molecule? It remains an indistinguishable uh, configuration, I agree, but think of the atoms. Let us call this atom A, let us call this atom B. If you apply a sigma v, rotation with respect to, sorry, reflection with respect to sigma v, then H A and H B remain in their place, right? Only the upper lobe of H A goes below the plane, the lower lobe of H A comes above the plane. Same is true for B. <coughs> Are we okay with that? This is a plane. Whenever I teach uh, symmetry, I always wish that I had more fingers on each hand and maybe two, three hands more. But unfortunately, I do not, so I will have to depend upon your imagination. I shall probably be better switch to principal axis of symmetry rather than horizontal plane. I was lying down. Okay, this is your water molecule and this is the plane, the plane waving at you, right? What happens to this atom? Does it change place in the reflection? No. What about this atom? No. What about this atom? No. Now, if I think of the other plane, sigma v dashed, then what happens? If I reflect, then this atom will go there that atom will come here, right? There is an interchange of atoms, right? So, even though both the planes leave the molecule in indistinguishable configurations, their actions are not one and the same. Sigma v does not cause a change in the position of any atom. Sigma v dashed causes an interchange of the hydrogen atoms, okay? Their effects are different. And as you will see, whether the atoms move or not, 
is going to become very important in later discussion. Maybe we do not discuss that in the, this course unless we talk about vibration, but we will see about that. Okay. So, you agree with me now that sigma v and sigma v dash do not exactly do the same thing to the molecule. So, they are not equivalent planes. Another way of checking it is this. What is the axis that we have in the molecule? C2. If I apply C2, does sigma v get converted into sigma v dash? If I apply C2, now forget about the molecule. Only think of this line, the axis and the two planes. If I apply C2, C2 means what? 180 degree rotation. This is a plane. This is C2, right? If I rotate, then what will happen? The plane will remain the same plane. It is just that my hand, uh, my wrist will not allow my hand to go that much. Huh? But it will remain in the same uh, plane, right? And the perpendicular plane will also remain perpendicular. These two planes will never interchange. You see where the axis is? The axis is at the intersection of the two planes, is not it? Right? The axis is at the intersection of the two planes. The two planes do not get transformed to each other by application of the uh, only other symmetry operation that is there in the molecule C2. Okay? So, we have seen an example of uh, non-equivalent planes of symmetry. Now, let us see an example of equivalent planes of symmetry. <coughs> okay, we will do this and we will come back. We have digressed a little bit. We actually wanted to uh, give the name to water molecule, but anyway, let us finish this discussion and then we will come back. This is a structure of ammonia and I hope you can see it in the three dimensions. One plane in the, uh, one bond in the plane of the paper, one bond pointing towards you menacingly, the third bond is scared of you, it is running away behind the plane, right. Now see, uh, you told me that there is a principal axis of symmetry here, there is an axis of symmetry, what is it? C3, where is the axis? This is the axis. What are the other uh, elements of symmetry here? Sigma v, where is sigma v? Yes, plane containing the NH bond and, and the vertical axis of course. So, I can write like this. This is one plane. This is another plane. I hope you get the orientation. It is along that bond that was pointing towards you. And this is a third plane. Right? Like three blades of a fan. All right. Now see, what does each plane do? Let us take this sigma v. Let us call this sigma v. You agree that it is a vertical plane of symmetry, right? Where it contains the principal axis of symmetry, the only axis of symmetry. Huh? So now, let us call this sigma v and start work with that. What does that sigma v do to the atoms? Upon operation of uh, sigma v, okay, let us name them also. I will call them H A. Hb, Hc. Upon application of this sigma v, first of all, the nitrogen does not change place, right? What about Ha? Does Ha change place? No. What about Hb and Hc? They change places, right? So, that is the action of Ha, uh, sigma v. Now, this one. Tentatively, I will call it sigma v only. What does that plane do? Will you agree with me that it leaves nitrogen and Hb in their positions and cause an interchange of Ha and Hc, right? And the third plane, 
nitrogen and hc remain in their places ha and hb interchange places right so see the three planes have similar kind of action nitrogen and the hydrogen contained in the plane would not move the other two hydrogen atoms would interchange places that is the name of the game right so this all the three planes then are identical will you agree with me i'm sorry they are equivalent they should not say identical they are equivalent planes so i do not have the compulsion of writing sigma v and sigma v dash anymore they be, they behave similarly so i can call them sigma v okay so that was the first definition let's look at the second definition this here is your c3 axis you told me now if you perform c3 axis will you agree with me that the three planes interchange places remember what happened in water you applied c2 and the two planes did not interchange places sigma v remained sigma v sigma v dash remained sigma v dash here however the three sigma v's get interchanged among each other upon application of c3 so there is another element outside the set which causes an interchange of the members of this set that is the second definition of equivalence got it meth ha huh? sure okay so i don't have to call them sigma v sigma v dash sigma v double dash abc nothing sigma v is good enough they are indistinguishable okay so this is a very important difference between uh, equivalent and non equivalent uh, symmetry elements all right now see let us i can see but you cannot even see the flow chart now isn't it even looking at, without looking at the flow chart i think it's very easy for you to tell me the uh, symmetry point group of ammonia so the c3 principal axis and the only other thing that is there is a vertical plane of symmetry so it has to be c3 right what about water there is c2 and sigma v sigma v dash are different but it looks somewhat foolish if i call it c2 v v dash there is no provision for that in your uh, flow chart so we are content calling it c2v all right okay now instead of me drawing uh, bad diagrams since you have this projection facility i think it makes sense to show you the book right away okay next molecule you want to uh, talk about is hydrogen peroxide can you can you see this clearly is it big enough can you see this all right and you know the structure of h2o2 right it's non planar what are the axes of symmetry or elements of symmetry that are there unfortunately the answer is given there is one problem of showing you the book right the only thing you have is h2o2 axis one bond is like this one bond is another like this okay so you take something in the middle perpendicular you turn then the two bond gets interchanged okay so what will be the point group c c6 c2 c2 there is no c6 here fine the okay, movie now will cover some of these what about this this molecule 
Uh, how do I not cover that and cover this? Yeah, there you are. Do you see the S4 axis? Huh? You turn by 90 degrees, what will happen? This will come, will it come here? You just turn by 90 degrees. What will the molecule look like? With respect to this axis, this axis here, if you turn by 90 degrees, then what kind of a structure will it be? This is what the molecule is, right? Let me name them A, B, C, D. The bond is between A and B and C and D, okay? If you turn by 90 degrees with respect to this axis, what will happen? In place of B, you will have A, right? In place of C, you will have B. In place of D, you will have C. In place of A, you will have D. And do not forget the bond is between A and B and C and D. So, the molecule has turned by 90 degrees. And what you have is a, a not an indistinguishable configuration, right? So, you could do that with the other bonds as well. And then what you see is, if you now, after turning by 90 degrees, if you deflect with respect to this plane during the midpoints, then you will get back the uh, same kind of molecule. That is S4 for you. Let me see if I can draw it. We start from here. Turn by 90 degrees. So, C4. C4 operation, what do you get? I do it. <coughs> well, that's what it is. And now, if you deflect, then what happens? If you reflect along a plane that is perpendicular to the uh, axis, then again this will come up, this will come up. So, earlier you have a bond in this orientation, again you have a bond in the same orientation. I wish I had got the model, it is very easy to see in the model, okay. So, this is an S4 axis, all right. Let us move to an interesting example. And let me draw it actually. Okay, you know the structure of ferrocin. So, what does ferrocin look like if you look down from the top? You see a 5 membrane ring, not looking very good here, and you see another 5 membrane ring. like this right and they are eclipsed ok. Now, it is very easy to figure out. Do you see the C5 axis of symmetry? C5 is not very difficult to see. This is C5 axis of symmetry right. Both the rings are 5 membered. So, if you turn by 2 pi by 5, you get back an uh, indistinguishable configuration. Are we all uh, okay with this? Are we all on the same page? Any other axis of symmetry? Sn, S10. 
yeah the C 5 axis of symmetry is also S 10 axis of symmetry right because then this carbon atom will come here and then get reflected upon this ok. Other than that any simple axis of symmetry first of all the C 2 has to pass through the uh, iron right let us first uh, agree upon that. In ferrocene what is it? Fe2 plus or Fe3 plus or Fe0? 2 plus right ferrocene. So, uh, any C2 axis must pass through the uh, ferrous ion ok and any axis that passes through the ferrous ion what will it do? It is going to interconvert the two rings right it is important to understand that. So, this is ferrocene right anything that can do this is going to be a C2 axis. Isn't it? This is ferrocene. You need an axis through this which will give you something like that. Now uh, draw the structure and see if you can figure it out. And this is a little better than what I drew earlier. Do you see C2? These are the two rings, right? Iron is exactly in the middle. So, if you want the two rings to interconvert, then it must be something like this, right? Parallel to both the planes and right at the center. So, it must go through iron. The question is at which angle? Of course, perpendicular to C5, I said that already. But even perpendicular to C5, you can have infinite number of lines, right? So, now I am talking about this orientation. Which lines? Okay, I will take that. Let me not draw it. Will you agree with me that that is C2? I wish I had a pen of another color. Let us look at it point by point, then only we will understand, okay. Yeah. This is one way of making a small diagram look big, fortunately. Huh. Let us name them A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. I hope you can read that. Now, see when I turn with respect to this axis, do not forget where the axis is. Axis is equidistant from the two rings, it goes right through the ferrous ion and it is perpendicular to the C5 axis. Now, if I rotate by 180 degrees, what I am saying is, is A and G should interchange position right here. You cannot see no matter where I write it, I have been over enthusiastic with the zooming. A and G would change places. Will you agree with me? A and G will change places. The angular disposition is exactly between if I take the center and if I take projections in the middle, the angular dis disposition is exactly in between the two lines, right. So, A and G would interchange places. B and F would interchange places. C and I cannot even read it is H. C and H would interchange places. Is it C or is it E? Sorry. A, B, C, D, E. E and H would interchange places. Do you see that? Huh? 
and you can work out the correlation for every atom. Let us take the simpler case of ruthenosine. Ruthenosine is very simple. In ruthenosine, you have eclipsed five membered rings. I just draw these two sides, you can figure out, right? They are on top of each other. Now, see what do you have? You have C5, right? Do you have any other axis? C2. In this case, C2 is very easy to understand. C2 would be like this. But still, do not forget that this C2 is not on any of those planes. Even this C2 goes through the ferrous ion and is perpendicular to the C5 axis. Are you all uh, okay with that? You are answered, right? Okay. So, the C2 passes through the ferrous ion. It is not on any of the uh, five, uh, any of these rings and it is perpendicular to C5. How many such C2s are there? 5. Very easy to figure out. Okay, I am not risk drawing another one. I think you can understand that there are 5. Okay. What else is there? Which plane? So, first which plane do you look for? Horizontal. Do you have horizontal plane of symmetry? Yes. Right? So, you do not have to look any further. For the nomenclature at least, we are done. So, what will it be? C5H? C or D? It will be D because you said you have there are 5 perpendicular C2 axis. 5 C2 axis perpendicular to the principal axis, right? So, little more than C is D. So, this is D5H. That was easy. Now, what we are doing is, this is how the planes were. I am now turning them just a little. Okay. That is the case in ferrocene. This one. Right. That is the case in ferrocene. Now, what are the symmetry elements that will uh, survive and what are the symmetry elements that will be destroyed? Let us think like that. C5 will still survive, right? Because C5, see, C5 is uh, for the individual rings, okay? The two rings do not talk. They do not get mixed by C5. They do not care, right? So, C5 will still be there. Horizontal uh, plane goes. Right, we agree with that. Horizontal plane cannot be there anymore because it turned a little bit, right? So that sigma is that was there will no longer survive. Agree with that or not? Because what is it? Not on top of each other, isn't it? Right? So sigma h is gone. What about C2? Now let us ask the question. Is C2 there or is C2 not there? Now, let us think like this. Earlier, we have seen A, B, C, D, E and bottom of A you have, I will call them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right? The, the carbon atoms, the top 5 are A to E, the bottom 5 are 1 to 5. When you apply uh, C2, what happens? Where does A go? And over with the bottom one, the easier one, D5H. You apply C2. Where does A go? Okay, good question. This C2. A remains where it is? No. A and 1 interchange. Do not forget where the C2 axis is. The C2 axis is not on any of the planes. The C2 axis goes through the uh, ferrous ion that is there, equidistant from both the planes, perpendicular, uh, parallel to them. Ah. So, A and 1 will interchange, is that right? Then B and 
Vn5, not Vn2, right? Vn5, En2, right? Then Cn4, Dn3, nothing else is left. Do you all agree? Huh? Now, what I have done is I have turned just a little. This is your A, B, C, D, E. And let us say this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, uh, by how much have I turned one ring with respect to the other? 36, right? I am going from ruthenosin to ferrocene. What is the angle of twist I have given? Keeping one fix, how, by how much have I dotted the other one? 360 by 10, right? Well, if you give 360 by 5, once again you will have ruthenosin kind of structure, okay? You have rotated by 36 degree. Okay. Now, uh, let us say I turn this C2 axis by 18 degrees, half of 36. Okay. Where will it go? Like this, isn't it? I'm sorry. It is going to the center, and that is just bad drawing. So, there are four atoms on one side, and that is the other. Four atoms on one side? Four atoms on one side, six on the other. Let us see one, one, two, three, 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 between D and 3. Now it is perfect, right? Now you see the same A1 kind of correspondence is there, okay? So, C2 survive even if you give a twist. It is just that unless the two pentagons are really regular, it is very difficult to draw that line, okay? When we see it using the model, I think you will see it much better. But it is also important to try to develop the vision without the model. So, the 5 C2 survive. Okay, C5 survives, sigma H is gone. What about the planes? Are the planes there or are they gone? Vertical planes? Vertical plane will be something like this, isn't it? Is it there or is it not there? It is still there. It is just that you do not call them vertical planes anymore. This perpendicular cities are there and the vertical plane would uh, bisect the angle between them, so you call them dihedral planes, right? So, what do we have here? Principal axis of symmetry is C5. You have 5 C2s perpendicular to C5, so that makes the name D5. You do not have horizontal plane, so if you look for dihedral plane, so it is D5D. Okay, D5D. All right, fine. 